This is the new for 2023 MSI Vector GP68. It's a bit of a weird one because this, this is an incredibly powerful gaming laptop with an i9-12900HX and an RTX 4080. I picked this up locally for actually a pretty good price and even the MSRP on this laptop isn't too bad, especially if you're trying to buy into a 4080 laptop, which can be actually pretty expensive in 2023. 230 watts of combined boost between the CPU and the GPU. It's gonna have the power to push high frames and high textures, you know, 1440p, even 4K. And the fact that it's a 12 gigabyte VRAM GPU means that not only are you gonna have the power to push those frames, but you're also gonna have the VRAM to basically contain them. You're not gonna hit a VRAM wall and see a tank in performance. So this 4080 laptop might be actually a pretty good sweet spot for a lot of people who are looking for a very powerful laptop for right now that's gonna have legs going forward, but doesn't also cost a fortune. You can use this as a business style laptop as well because it does have a MUX switch. Of course, you can disable the RTX 4080 graphics and just run off the iGPU on the Intel CPU. It's not going to be as powerful as an AMD iGPU, but for desktop purposes, it's still going to be more than enough. A little bit of plastic on this laptop, but it does still have a lot of metal as well on the lid, for example. And the overall build quality is actually very good. It's a very sturdy laptop. I typically find that MSI laptops are very scream gamery. This one, not so much. It does have a little bit more of a discreet look to it. The most impressive part of this laptop, you actually can't see it right now. And it does have a good keyboard. It has great speakers. It has a good trackpad. But one of the features that you really can't see right now, it has very impressive cooling inside the laptop. Despite the fact that it has a pretty spicy 12900HX i9 processor and a 4080 inside of it at running at high wattage, it actually doesn't get very hot. The fans can get a little noisy from time to time. I find that they're you know, no worse than any other gaming laptop. However, the thermal performance on this laptop is incredible. Despite the fact that this laptop is gonna give you near desktop tier performance, a 4080 12 gigabyte and an i9 12900HX, it has a weird pairing. So the screen is a 1080p screen, so which is kind of odd. Obviously, if you're doing eSports, you're gonna be able to lock yourself at the native refresh rate, 144 hertz at 1080p and just max. You're never gonna have any issues because this is huge overkill in terms of CPU and GPU for that screen. I have a 4K 144Hz Dell monitor that I hook this up to, and despite the fact that you know the actual display on this is only 1080p, you can almost use this as a desktop replacement because it can definitely handle 1440p and even 4K gaming in modern AAA titles at good settings. Inside of the laptop, I just took out all the screws here. Uh, pretty sure you literally just take it out, it's no big deal. So this little butt uh, top piece just kind of it's just kind of sitting there, so you can pull that off a bit and then just pull down like that. So you can see there, there's the uh, headphone jack, doesn't want to come out. Uh, it'll actually pull on it, so you probably want to go from the other side here, pull up from here, and then release that way. Because otherwise, you're going to pull the port up and cause some damage there. So let's have a look at the internals of the laptop. So lots of heat pipes here, so you can see we got uh, four heat pipes here. Uh, four on this side, and then this is the fifth one that goes around. Pretty good fans here, they're nice and thick. Um, the actual, and then the blades are, you know, not super, super dense, but dense enough. So pretty robust cooling here, to be honest. Um, you know, it might get noisy, we'll have to see. But regardless, it does have a lot of, like there's a lot of copper here in general. Um, so that's that. Um, upgradeability, you have your Wi-Fi chip here, which is Intel AX211. So good Intel Wi-Fi there, upgradable, obviously you can just take it out. So for upgradability in terms of storage, you have two NVMe slots, the one that ships with it. Of course, this is upgradable. You could just take that out and put a new one in. And then you have an empty slot here where you could put in a second drive, so 2280. CMOS battery here if you need to replace that. RAM is under here. This one shipped with 32 gigabytes of RAM. That comes off there, and then the RAM is underneath, you can see. Uh, this one comes with two sticks of Samsung RAM, 4800 megahertz RAM, um, which is as fast as I believe this chip supports. Gaming laptops in the past had very inadequate speakers. They typically almost kind of sucked. This one has nice big speakers. You can see here two uh, down firing speakers. Battery's pretty good here too. So you can see here it is the uh, 90 watt hour. It says it's rated to 87 watt hours, but the typical is 90 watt hours. So we'll see what we get. So it may, it may get a little bit noisy, but it's gonna move a lot of air. You can see that the actual vents here are also uh, copper too. So the whole thing is copper, you can see there. Tons of copper on this. So you're gonna move a lot of heat in general. Like there's gonna be a lot of hot air that's gonna be able to be blown off of this. I guess, you know, 10 years down the road, if you find one of these in the junk bin, you can steal the copper and melt it down and make yourself $5 or whatever. So there's the internals. And here's a look at the laptop. So it's pretty big, it's nice and heavy. Um, if you don't like heavy laptops, you, you're not gonna like that. Um, there's a mix of plastic and metal on this. So the top here, this is nice metal here, no problem. This butt thing is plastic. Um, it has like a plastic, I don't know, piece on there. Uh, you know, the sides here, plastic, 
and plastic bottom. So it's a lot of plastic, a lot of metal. Top is metal, bottom is plastic, back is plastic. You know, all this kind of gamer setup is all plastic. Uh, these are actually plastic. They're not too rubberized, these feet here. Um, same as these, they're a little bit more plasticky than they are rubbery. This should still give you a decent amount of grip, but they're not going to be super grippy. Uh, big opening on the vents here. You may not be able to catch it through the camera, but there's, I can see through here a ton of copper. Big vents there, so you'll be pulling in a lot of air here. So on the right here, we get two USB-A ports right there. USB-C, this USB-C here supports power delivery and display ports. Left side, you get good ports as well. You get an SD card, which is nice. Um, that's kind of rare on gaming laptops. Typically, they're on more hybridized devices, but I guess they just put everything on this. Uh, headphone, microphone, combo jack. It's a nice metal ring to it, so it's not plastic. That's good. And another USB. This one has a Thunderbolt port, so this will be your Thunderbolt 4. RJ45 Ethernet. That's good. Uh, you get HDMI, so you're going to be able to power this out. If you're doing out to a display on like an external monitor, you'll want to use that for gaming. You can use the display out for you know just day-to-day -day use, but if you're gaming, you'll want to go over HDMI. Another USB-C here. This one also supports uh, power delivery there, so you can power your device in from here as well. So you have lots of different ports here. So. 2,773 grams, that's going to be well over 5 pounds, 6.2-ish pounds or so, so fairly heavy. And so nice interior though, a uh, huge trackpad you can see here, we'll test that out after. Uh, keyboard here, nice keyboard here, you can see it's a, uh, oh my god, keyboard here looks pretty nice, kind of a low profile chiclet style keyboard. Um, that's fine, um, Asus and Lenovo often have like some larger size keys, but they also have the lower ones like this. Um, Steel Series is the keyboard, I don't know, designer. Microphone camera there, and you can kill your camera with a physical kill switch there. So that's good. It's not going to be the BioStide over here. I prefer just this. You can just literally just close it. Um, that's good. So it looks nice. I mean, the inside actually looks less gamery than the outside. This looks way more professional. So if you get this laptop and you do a fresh Windows install, which I did, you're going to want to get a couple software. This is one of the most important ones, MSI True Color, um, because the screen has to have color calibration profiles. So if you don't, so if you don't calibrate, oh my god, fuck off! If you don't calibrate your screen or install this uh, calibration profile, it'll look kind of weird. Uh, it doesn't have the best color range on it. Like this isn't you know 100% DCI-P screen, um, but it is fairly well calibrated. Um, so, you know, the color range may not be the best in the world, but you can use this, you know, MSI True Color. If it, it should come with the soft, it comes with the laptop, but if you do a fresh Windows install, which I do, you'll want to redownload it. So the screen here is nothing special. It's just a 1200p screen. At least it's 16 by 10, so it's going to have a higher aspect ratio. Um, 16 by 9 is thankfully kind of vanishing, so you get a little bit more height, which is great on, you know, a bigger laptop like this. Refresh rate, I'm not plugged in right now, so I'm at 60, but it goes all the way up to 144 hertz. So, you know, if you're a gamer, 144 hertz, but even for office use, I prefer 144. Um, it's basically a gen, see the speeds here? So basically it's a gen 3 uh, drive, so, you know, you can go all the way through here, but it's a gen 3 drive, um, higher end gen 3 for sure. So, you know, you get, you're going to get, it's an OEM drive, so it'll still be very fast for an operating system drive. You know, it's not gen 4, you know, 5,000, 7,000 megabytes a second. Now we'll do the screen test here. So you can see here, um, it's a little bit orange. So this isn't, you know, this is not a professional screen. You're not going to have 100% DCI-P, not even close. So, you know, if you're doing professional photo work, this is not the screen for you. You can see there, um, it's muted. It's actually worse in person. Um, it's a little bit more muted in person. The camera is actually enhancing the orange, the uh, red here, but in person it's quite muted. There are no bloom on the screen at all. So it's not a bad panel by any means. It's just not a color accurate panel. So it's a fast refresh rate, 1080p screen. Um, that has good contrast ratio, it'll be good for gaming and that, but it doesn't have good color range. That's the downside here, but it's not designed for that. So the blues look fine. Um, typically blues look good on these. Uh, it's usually the oranges that look bad, I find. Blue looks fine. Yeah, that's a little muted. Yellow looks fine. Uh, yeah, green looks nice and vibrant. Uh, this all looks good. Greens look good. Sharp enough. It's 1080p, so I mean, it's not super sharp, but it looks fine, to be honest. For gamers, they won't care. Nice, you know, nice greens, nice blues, no problems there. Uh, it really is the reds where uh, this laptop suffers. I'm doing an audio test now. Let's see where we're at. We'll start at 40. I think this is going to get very loud. It had very nice looking speakers inside, so if you have headphones, be careful. My, my iPhone usually normalizes pretty good, but just in case. Oh yeah, it sounds nice. I'm gonna turn it up. It's 
pretty loud. That's just 60. Again, this will normalize, but this is very loud. 100% is like loud, loud. You can probably hear the, my voice. I'm talking pretty loud and it's way quieter. Turn it up one more time. Yeah, so the Legion speakers are a tiny bit better because the mid-range was a little bit higher, uh, the profile on the Lenovo Legion. Um, these have a like a decent amount of bass and they actually have a lot of high end to the point of almost being a little bit too much. You probably tune them, uh, but it sounds very good to be honest. Um, I have no problem with that audio. That sounds really nice actually. So Okay, so we have the trackpad and keyboard here. Let's have a look at that. The keyboard, let's look at the trackpad first. Nice big trackpad. Um, not gigantic, but it's definitely big. Um, feels nice and smooth on top. I don't know if it's a grass, glass trackpad. I don't think so, um, but it's a smooth texture. Like this is plastic and this is much, much, much smoother. So you can really tell the difference there when you come to the trackpad. It feels nice and smooth, very precise actually. And the keyboard is actually very nice. Now the keyboard, so the keyboard, the actual key caps, if you can see, are low profile. Um, it's basically like a Apple Magic keyboard. <laughs> like this shape of the keys, the font on it, the layout and everything is very, very similar to the Apple keyboard. Um, one weird thing is the function keys over here. There's no function key over here. That's a little weird. You do get a full dedicated numpad, which is awesome. It is weirdly skinny though. Like the actual number pad is narrow and the keys are tiny, but I mean, again, it's not a professional laptop. It's nice to have that. I would take this tiny little number pad on my laptop any day before I would get rid of it. When you, you know, I may not use a number pad on a daily basis, but when I don't have it, it really bothers me because you know, when I'm doing number crunching, this is nice. And it's small, it's good enough that you can, you know, use your, I use three fingers to do numpad and you can, I can still bang it out. I wish it was a little bit wider, but I don't have any problem with it. Uh, we have some kind of function here, play. I don't know what that does. Oh, you can put a, you can put a cross here right on the screen. So I guess, I mean, obviously the 1080p high power, high refresh rate screen is going to be designed for competitive gamers, like 144 hertz, people who are going to be playing games at 144 FPS competitively. The fact that you have a built-in crosshair is pretty straightforward. I mean, Okay, so let's just do our little typing test here. I'm on a weird angle, but uh, uh, let's do a little typing anyways. Yeah, it's actually a really nice keyboard. Um, very, very nice. I wish that the keycaps were a tiny bit taller, but it is a very nice keyboard. If you've used Ma uh, Apple Magic key keyboards, or whatever they're called, um, it's basically like that. It's actually more snappy. This is snappier than Apple keyboards. I'm on dedicated GPU mode, so only the RTX graphics, and I plugged in a USB-C monitor right here to the Thunderbolt port, and it doesn't work. So you cannot do dedicated graphics over that. You can only do the iGPU over the Thunderbolt. However, uh, you can see over here, this is the display port. Um, I'm on DGPU mode, so I don't have the integrated graphics working at all, and it is working. So as long as you go with this port over here, you will be getting uh, your dedicated graphics. That'll limit you, obviously, to 10 gigabit bandwidth, so. Okay, and here's a look at the built-in webcam. Uh, this is a very difficult scene, almost no light in the front, a little bit on the side, and light from the back, so we'll see how that looks, and then I'll cut to a uh, an easier scene. Okay, and this is a much better scene. There's a light right in front coming on my face. Uh, it looks a lot better, so it's obviously not doing that good in low light, but it seems to be doing pretty good in uh, middle light or you know front-facing light. So laptop comes with MSI Center. Again, I did a fresh Windows install, so I had to come in here. So there's different modes here. I think for most people, you just leave it on that, like just leave it on Smart Auto and let it do its thing. I'm doing here so you can go, uh, if you're gaming heavily, so when I do my game testing on this laptop, you go Extreme Performance. There you go. So this the... Uh, the watts and the power going to the GPU and the CPU are going to be dramatically increased. It's going to spare nothing for power. It's very loud, but if you're doing gaming, you throw it on that. Balanced is, you know, kind of mixed use. I think for a lot of people, you just put it on here, to be honest, or smart auto, but you can force it to be in balanced mode. Silent, you know, if you're just doing desktop based uh, tasks, throw it in silent mode. Um, it'll keep the fans nice and quiet if you're in class or something like that. The fans aren't going anyways. I'm not doing anything right now, but the fans aren't going anyways. So it's actually a very quiet laptop. Part of that is, I think, because it has gigantic amounts of copper on it. 
Um, so I've seen reviews on lap these MSI Vector laptops in the past saying they run super hot. But I mean, there's a ton of copper on this laptop. So clearly just having that much copper is just passively letting heat off. So silent mode is, I mean, it's not running at all, despite the fact that it has an i9. Super battery mode. I'll test battery life later and see how long it lasts. So that's good. Uh, and then of course you have your, you know, your MUX switch here. So you can go with discrete graphics, meaning it's always going to use the 4080. Uh, if you're gaming, that's the way you're going to want to go. If you're doing this exclusively gaming, that's going to be the way you want to go. Uh, hybrid graphics, it'll restart the computer, but hybrid graphics will switch between them. So when you're on games, it will use the dedicated graphics. When you're off games, it will go back to uh, integrated graphics. Technically, if you're on dedicated or discrete graphics mode, in theory, you'll get a little bit better performance. I think it's like 5 or 10% in raw gaming performance. Hybrid, it'll switch back and forth, but I think still you'll get a little bit less performance overall. But I think for a lot of people, I mean, it has a 4080 in it. Like, you're not going to be hurting for graphics performance, so you can just toss it in hybrid and just leave it, and you'll be good to go. Integrated graphics, you know, if you're going about your day and you're, you know, you want to get long, maximum battery life, taking this to school, taking this to work, oops, um, you actually want to be on integrated graphics mode because it will disable the 4080 in here. You'll get, you'll actually get quite a bit more battery on that. So, you know, you can throw it at integrated graphics and super battery if you're just going to be doing, you know, number crunching or you're going to be doing document editing or that kind of stuff or taking notes in class. You'll want to be on these here for maximum battery life. Day-to-day, -day, uh, mixed use, probably just throw it on mixed hybrid, balanced, or in most cases, probably smart auto here. You can throw it on this and it will, uh, yeah, you can see it does some stuff there. But uh, yeah, I think for a lot of people, just, you know, balanced mode and hybrid mode is probably the way to go uh, for most things. If you're doing some heavy, heavy gaming, especially if you're outputting to like a 4K display or something, you know, throw it on extreme performance. You're in class for the day, throw it on, uh, you know, super battery modes. And here's a neat feature. I'm in the BIOS here and I hit right control, right shift, left alt and F2. And it brings up this advanced BIOS here. Um, you can't see this otherwise. And then in here, you can see there's different settings that were not no, were not previously available. For example, you can see there's now a overclocking performance menu. Uh, so you can actually do some tweaking in here. Um, so you can enable some of the tweaking here. So you can go enable here. And then you actually get some tweaking here. So you can do overclocking, underclocking. I am no expert in overclocking or underclocking, but you know, a lot of gaming laptops, you don't have this option. So in here, the fact that it even exists is actually really cool. Here's just an example of some of the settings in here. I don't do any of this unless you're, you know, comfortable with messing around with your system. I am not, so I'm actually not going to tweak any of this, but um, there is actually a lot of stuff in here you can do. You can change your clocks, all kinds of stuff in here you can tweak. Uh, this is very, very rare to find on a laptop. Um, it has all kinds of stuff in here. Normally I use like XTU in Windows, but it looks like, you know, there's all kinds of stuff you can do in here. Um, if you're comfortable with it, I mean, if this is something you want to check out, definitely check out someone else's video who teaches you how to do this kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of advanced features in here, uh, much more than any other laptop I've ever used. And here's the noise on performance mode. Uh, I'm not even running this Cinebench. Basically, with performance mode, it just locks at max setting. It doesn't go up or down. There's balance mode. You can see there the CPU temps are not super hot, so the fans aren't nearly as loud. Not even close. We look at some benchmarks. So this is right here, performance mode. And you can see here that the CPU is only getting 15,884. So there's a huge jump if you go with the 13th gen, uh, on, at least in benchmarks like this. However, in gaming performance, it won't make a huge difference. Graphics score is really good here. I mean, just shy of 20,000, I mean, it's 4080. And then just right after that, you can see that I went into balanced mode and there's actually almost no real drop in performance despite the fact that the fans run considerably quieter in uh, balanced mode. So um, there's almost no reason to really run in performance mode in many cases. And in performance mode, we got 22,000 uh, for multi-core for rendering, which is actually pretty good. Again, the 13th gen, uh, 13,900 is going to be better. And then when you go to balanced mode, there's a little bit of a drop. So 22 down to 20,000. Again, not going to make a big difference whatsoever. And in both cases, it ran nice and cool. And then here's a look at the battery life. This is on a 1080p 60 YouTube. Um, and you can see here, you know, I'm on ba better battery mode here. 
and uh, we're getting uh, 0.45 hours, um, maybe five hours if you're lucky. So it's just not going to be you know good for battery life. It's this is even with a dedicated graphics disabled, but the 12900 HX is just not a not good for battery life. Okay, so now we'll do some game testing here. Uh, we're going to start with the brand new Armor Core game. Can't change the uh, frame rate above 120. That's like just a, no matter what you do, there's a cap. So yeah, I don't think they can go any higher. I just put it on max. We'll start with ray tracing off. Let's see what we get here. So this is just 1080p. This will be nothing for this GPU. I'm going to do a couple games at 1080p, and then I'm actually going to switch over to my 4K monitor because really, I mean, the internal screen is going to get crazy high frame rates. So you can see that we're hitting our hard cap of 120. There's nothing we can do about that, unfortunately. There might be a mod for this in the future. I'm sure there will be, but as it stands right now, I can't do anything. 1080p is going to be nothing for a 4080 laptop, to be honest. So I guess that's one of the benefits of this. Uh, I guess that's one of the benefits of this laptop, the 4080. I mean, you're pretty much you're going to be at 1080p. You're pretty much always going to get you know, max frame rates. Um, so we'll just go 1200p ultra. Uh, no ray tracing to start. We'll be able to use ray tracing. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so there you go. Yeah, so you can see here, we're actually getting up to 7.5 gigs of VRAM uh, at 1080p. I mean, it is ultra. Um, Hogwarts Legacy uses a lot of VRAM. We have lots more than that. I mean, this isn't an 8 gigabyte card, a 4060 or 4070. I mean, you'd be fine, but you'd be right at right up against that VRAM. The 4080, you have uh, four more gigs to work with, so no issues. But um, you can see here, great frame rates. Temporary drops aren't a big issue. Okay, now we're back at 4K, and we're actually at max settings here. So you can see here, we're at graphic settings 4K. Like the 4080 is something you're going to want a 1440p, 1600p screen, or even you know a 3.2 or 4K screen. And you can see here, I mean. Very good performance here. No tweaking, no lowering of the settings or anything like that. Um, yeah, very, very good performance here. Ooh, you didn't die, eh? Stop. Uh, 256 or 14 so we're all 1440p here and just see what kind of again unfortunately we're locked at 120 as a max and so you can see that on the top left we're only getting 120 fps we could be doing more uh but unfortunately the um hmm. yeah unfortunately that's just the max that's going to let us do here because the uh i don't know for some reason the game engine is locked at 120 fps being 120 fps the 0 0.1 percent lows aren't horrible um, I mean, we were doing fine at 4K, right? So, uh, VRAM is obviously well optimized in this game. Here, a little bit more going on here. Uh, now the fans are getting a little noisy. Oh, I switch, yeah, that way. So if you're looking for a laptop, I mean, you know, you take it on the go, it has really surprisingly good battery life, excellent acoustics, you know, performance is absolutely stellar on this laptop. You, know, you can take it with you. It's going to be a really great laptop, to be honest. The screen is not great, to be honest, but it's okay. It's passable, I suppose. Um, but the other thing is then you can plug it into your desktop based screen here and use it as a desktop replacement. I have a pretty powerful... I have a pretty powerful CPU on my desktop, you know, 7950X3D. It's not going to beat that. But I have an ARC A770, which is kind of a mid-range card, I would say, like lower to mid-range card. Um, and this absolutely smashes my desktop in terms of gaming performance. So, I mean, you could get this laptop and basically toss out your desktop in most cases because the CPU is going to be a really good performer. The GPU is a stellar performer, to be honest. Um, 12 gigabytes of VRAM is going to last you for quite a while. It has Thunderbolt 4, so you can easily hook yourself up with a dock. You, know, you can get more storage, not hard to get yourself a dock, you know, with extra hubs and that in there. Um, this one has an NVMe built right into it. 
um, it's a weird laptop because it's almost like you almost want to just use it as a desktop because it's so capable in terms of gaming performance. It is very, very, very powerful and it runs really cool, to be honest. So I think, you know, if you're like an esports gamer, it's kind of a no brainer. Actually, it's very, very powerful. You know, you'll get your 1080p and you'll be able to lock down any game with max FPS, no drops, because it's such a powerful performer. Uh, and the CPU is also very powerful. You know, it's an i9. You're not going to be CPU bound or anything like that. And then the other thing is, you know, if you want to play 1440p 4K, you can hook it up to an external screen. So it's a weird one for me. I think it's a very, very nice laptop, incredibly good performer. I just wish that it had a 1440p screen because it would be a more interesting pairing to put a 1440p screen with a 4080. 